What are your daily habits that you're doing? What are you washing your body with? What are you slathering on your skin? And women, unfortunately, the beauty products are riddled. Some of the worst. Yeah, riddled with this stuff. And you're doing it constantly. That mascara that doesn't wipe off, PFAS again. That lipstick that doesn't wipe off, PFAS again. That concealer, PFAS again. So it's like you're chemicalizing all this stuff. And then obviously that's not good for your skin either, right? And we, you know, we're trying to, you know. Well, it's the old, the old story of the lip balms and lip moisturizers. Exactly. They actually yeah, exactly. dry it out. Exactly. And so you have to put more on and you exactly. literally become addicted exactly. to the product you originally started yeah. to moisturize exactly. you know, your lips with. You interrupt <laughs> that sebum, that natural mm -hmm. lubrication that the skin has, and you interrupt that whole process. Not to mention whatever chemical you've just kind of usually dried it out like you said and then you become dependent on it and it takes a little bit to break that cycle you know just stop using that stuff think of i think of things like if you're gonna use you know if you're in a dry area or whatever and you're you know listen you got to look at hydration and everything else but you know think of it as nutrition right so coconut oil shea butter even olive Oil. Olive oil is great. You know, yeah. it's like a, there's a lot of, you got a great olive oil too. Yeah, don't thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Yummy. I mean, if it was good enough for Sophia Loren, uh, Come it's, on. Good, it's good enough for me Come to put on. on my skin. Come on. <laughs> and you feel it. Oh, you yeah. You feel it. You feel the difference. You feel it's natural. Like it, everyone likes to smell good too. So essential oils, man. There's an infinite better result. Like, again, like this whole thing is set up from my perspective, divorcing nature. If we go just like that, oh my God, I bought into the idea I need a moisturizer on my lips. Now you just came in there and shut yourself off or disrupted the natural rhythm of your little microsystem of your lips. All of this stuff, if you divorce yourself from all of those things and chemicalize yourself, especially from a personal care standpoint, then you're a victim to that now side effect. But if you look at this stuff of like, oh, what can I literally get a benefit of from a moisturizer standpoint, but also as a nutritional side, then it becomes a whole other thing, right? Lavender, incredible yeah. healing agent, as well as smelling, smelling good. So yeah, you can still, you can still smell good, but also it's also parasympathetic dominant for your body so it helps to pull pull you down into calm you, yeah. yeah calm you down and so we, so it's going back to that common sense and i think ultimately through the book i just want to wake people up to we're all into patterns mm -hmm. we're all into habits and we're just ingrained in them. and it takes a little bit to go oh i had no idea that that convenient little slippery dental floss i didn't realize it had chemicals of PFAS in it connected to kidney cancer. Well, I certainly don't want to use it now, but it's convenient. Right? Yeah. And until you disrupt that. So this book can, can be startling, right? It can be overwhelming. Yeah. But the point is just making one step, one step at a time, you know? How about one of my, my favorite subjects, sunscreen. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Don't I have to protect oh. myself from the sun? You got to use your common sense, right? <laughs> you, you need, I mean, you need the sun. We love the sun. Just don't understand where your own melanin levels are at, how white you are, how dark you are, and respect that. So a few minutes a day, full exposure. And then if you're going to go more, then just use a natural... I mean, coconut oil is between five and seven percent natural SPF, right? And, you know, yeah, so we have to, and the chemical soup and sunscreens are scary. Oh, I absolutely agree. Very and the, the sad thing is, these chemicals, skin absorbs things. Yeah. And these chemicals are absorbed oh. directly. Yeah. And they're all endocrine disruptors. Yeah. And I just, it scares me to death. I see pictures from the um, dermatology literature of pregnant women smearing oh. sunscreen oh. on their belly. Oh. 
you know, to to protect their child. And I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, they're sending, you know, hormonal single uh, signals to this developing brain. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. do you have any idea what you might be doing totally. to yeah. your child? Yeah, oxybenzoines oh, and yeah. all of these things. The And you're also thwarting the vitamin D, right? Exactly. So, so like people, especially like, okay, don't be afraid so much. Respect your situation and don't burn. Like burning's never good. Like that's yeah, a that's common right. Bad idea. So yeah, we're not saying go out in the sun and just stay there. Like just don't burn your skin. That's damaging. But build up that melanin. Build up that that solar those solar panels because it's it's so gifting. And stay away from especially the aerosolized sunscreens. Huh. All of those, the benzenes, the dioxins, all of that stuff in those. That's horrifying. The connections to cancer. But aren't those all illegal? I mean, don't we control that now? I know you are going to tell me no. I don't understand how it's possible that virtually every one of these things is not regulated. It, it's, you know how many swear words are in that book out loud that I'm staring at research and I knew a little bit about it, but as you know, when you're digging and you're going, they know it's probable carcinogenic activity. They know it. Right. And then moms and everyone, and they're just like, because they're going like, well, if I can buy it, it's probably safe. And I'm definitely afraid of the sun. So I need to get my banana boat or whatever the hell. Sunscreen. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. That's a weird flip that we have evolved with the sun. And, and you know, there's connections to you know, the carcinogenic activity of the actual lotions themselves. Yeah. Not the skin or not the sun, right? So, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. I grew up in the 50s and 60s and my, there wasn't any sunscreen back then. <laughs> and my parents, particularly my mother, would literally kind of set a timer uh, during oh, wow. the, the start of season. And you know, okay, you're, you know, you're going out for 30 minutes yep. and you're done yep. and you're coming back in and you're going to read a book. And yeah. we progressed. And so, yeah. you know, by the end of the summer, we were brown little berries, but brilliant woman thinking back, but they knew that yeah. you had to develop a callus, yeah. if you will, yeah. a melanin callus. Yeah. And we never got burned because no. my mother was, you know, we thought she was, you know, a till of the hunt. Uh, oh, we're playing, right, we're having right, such right. a good time in the water. You know, no. And, it's time to come out. Come on out. Yeah. You're out. Sorry. 100%. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. But you see, sunscreen is a convenience because, yeah. you know, I can go out, you know, all day. Yeah. I don't wear sunscreen. I actually, and I write about this, I eat my sunscreen. <laughs> right. You exactly. know, I eat. All these polyphenols, vitamin Sensing. C, and yeah, I just spent you know, a couple of weeks in Europe hiking 12 miles a day in a short sleeve shirt. I did have a hat on, yeah. but I didn't wear any sunscreen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've got a nice tan, but I never burned. Yeah. 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 So again, that's common sense. That stuff yeah. scares me. I mean, really, sunscreen scares me. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. trying to scare my viewers. Again, this is. Um it's the flip of the script of the fear overshadowing our common sense of like your mother, right? So our population now is just like running around afraid of the sun and they would rather put on in a virtually unregulated chemical on their skin. If you found this video helpful, I think you're gonna love this one. It turns out that farm-raised trout not farm-raised salmon, actually convert their omega-6 feeds into omega-3s. So if you see farm-raised trout on a menu, or sometimes you'll see it at Costco, don't be afraid to buy it.